goes to somebody and they like it, great. If they don't, because like different people that teach about social media, well, when you do Instagram, you want to cater to this kind of person. Of course, LinkedIn is obviously business, and you don't want to have any drama. Okay. You, you are muted, but we are streaming up live now. Good. So we are streaming in five, yeah. four, three. Hey everybody, CamiBaker.com here. I am super excited to be streaming live on Facebook Live with the Happiness Jungle TV show. And this is new technology for us. We are so glad that you are in our beta phase of it. So we're going to get started here with my guest, Tyler Gates, in just a moment. And when we get started, we're going to start just like we're doing a TV show, and then we're just going to roll right with it. So you're going to watch us as we are filming the TV show live, and then it will be edited and actually used as a TV show in about a month. But you get to see it live here. Hi everybody, CammieBaker.com. I am the queen of the Happiness Jungle TV show today and I am super excited to have my guest, Tyler Gates. Tyler and I have been friends for a couple of years now and Tyler is a magnificent display of a wonderful human being who has really taken on the world, taken the bull by the horns, just doesn't say no, doesn't say, doesn't, actually, what is it the thing that you say to me? You say to me, the one thing that I said to you was to always raise your hand. That was spot on. That's exactly what it was. And uh, that, that mantra stays with me to this day. And, and I think that's part of the reason we're still talking, and still very much friends because we continue to collaborate. I continue to raise my hand. And, and, and frankly, when you raise your hand, you have to ask more questions too. So um, every opportunity that I've give, or gotten, I have to usually continue to develop my skills. And uh, one of those people that I reach out to is yourself. So thank you for all the great advice. Nice. Well, I know that when I, um, one of the things that I say is, the more I know, the more I know I don't know. Too true. And the more I know I need to know. Mm -hmm. And the more people that I coach and mentor or get in front of or train or have the blessing and the opportunity to say something that might change their, the more I do that, the more I want to grow and learn. Mm -hmm. Because my mentor said to me a long time ago, she said, Cammie, it's like baby bird bites. You know, there are people that have what I want and they give me little baby bird bites. Ah. And then I take those baby bird bites and I feed them to the people who are hungry, who want to be at the level where I am. So that, so I'm always going to get the baby bird bites and bring them and feed them to the baby bird. So uh, I'm always looking to grow. And that's one of the things that I noticed about you. You know, way back in the day, a couple years ago, we're at a networking event. And, you know, we go to networking events. There's 20, 30, 50, 100 people in the room. And there's people that we see that, um, you know, are what I call closet people. They're full of anxiety. They're scared to death. They're not talking to anybody, you know, or God forbid they're people that are sharking through the room and being very aggressive or what have you. But one of the things that I noticed about you, Tyler, was that you are polished. You're well put together. You're comfortable in your own skin, and you're not afraid to say hello to people and to just create conversation, which is one of the reasons why here we are two years later, and you are just killing it in your chosen career. So let's talk a little bit about what it is that you think is helping you, like you said, uh, personal development. What do you think are some of the things that you're doing that is helping you to become an even better business person, personal, uh, you just recently got engaged. I did. Thank yes. you for remembering. Yes. Right? Um, a great friend, a great co a co worker, a, a great contributor to society. Let's just talk about what does it mean to be positive. Uh, that, that's a great point, and I want to take a, a small step back to something you alluded to before um, that I was. I was not afraid in the networking event to kind of get out of my shell and say hello. And 
Uh, that was not the case, funny enough, oh gosh, six years ago, seven years ago, when I was uh, kind of middle of my career of college, let's say. I was very much an introvert. I, I really liked sticking to the few circles that I knew. Um, and, and I realized in my first job out of college, if I wanted to blossom as an entrepreneur or follow in my dad's footsteps of opening up his own business, um, that I was going to have to push myself. And uh, one of the quotes, I think it was Tony Robbins, if I remember correctly, is, life begins on the edge of your comfort zone. And I took that to heart. I really, I really started thinking about that. And I, I wanted to be the best in, in sports, in school, in, in, in my profession. And I realized that if I wanted to be the best, I had to do what others weren't willing to frankly do. Um, and, and from there, it started to snowball. I, I've had bad days, too. I, I have bad weeks. I've had bad months. I, I, frankly, I've had bad quarters. Um, but it's constant effort, in my, in my opinion, finding small, small victories and not really keeping your eyes on the big prize. I know where I want to be, but if I don't do the small checklist that I set aside for myself every morning throughout the day, I know that I will never get to the point in my career where I want to be. So uh, I, I know it's a roundabout way of answering that question, but for me it was really realizing my biggest weaknesses. Um, and instead of straying too far away from them, I kind of hit them spearhead on and knew that, fail fast, fail often early in life because I, I want to be the successful 30, 40, 50 year old. I, um, I, I don't think there's a bad route with going uh, to the corporate route or nine to five. That's, that's still a great gig for a lot of people, a lot of society, but it just wasn't for me. Uh, so I realized I had to start winning um, on the small level to get to where I wanted to be in the grand scheme of things. You have said so much. You know, one of the ways to get ahead is if, if you want what other people don't have, you have to be willing to do what they will never do. And everybody, everybody watching, everybody listening, everyone has the same opportunities. You know, we could have a whole conversation about economic status and where you were born and, you know, silver spoons and who has genetic capability, etc. But the bottom line is anybody and everybody can pick up a book. Anybody and everybody can ask the right questions. Anybody and everybody can start to say, you know what, I really want to do something more with my life. So you mentioned Tony Robbins. Yep. And, you know, Tony Robbins has had a big effect on a lot of people's uh, lives. Uh, tell me some of the other mentors that you've had and how at such a young age, like when I was in my 20s, Sex, drugs, and rock and roll. I'm not going to lie. Like, I didn't understand mentorship. I didn't know that leaders were readers. I, I wasn't um, taught. You know, I just wasn't taught. I was just barely getting by and doing my own thing. Now, I was always very tenacious, and I've always been an entrepreneur, and I was selling gum to other kids at eight years old to make money, so I always had that kind of a mindset. But I didn't even understand mentorship or... Uh, having someone help to lead the way until I was in my 30s, dare I say, in my 30s at least. What was it at such a young age that inspired you? I, I wish I could say a light bulb came on and that was like there was a big cool story behind it, but frankly there, there really wasn't. I, I started my career from college uh, as a mutual fund analyst, so I started the nitty-gritty 9 to 5. I knew what I was doing every single day. I thought I had it all figured out, didn't have any mentors in place, and really wasn't as much of a sponge at that age as I should have been. Uh, I came to Edward Jones uh, gosh, three years ago, um, and, and that's really where I started to blossom. They have a great training program. They really started to help you understand your why, your purpose in life, and then help you build a practice around that why. And I know one of the reasons we continue to get together for me is personally cause marketing. Uh, I'm very involved in the community and very involved in the town. Uh, and, and knowing some of these things and being at Jones and having a few mentors, really my first mentor that I had, uh, his name is David Trainer. Uh, he'll probably never see this video. Um, uh, it'd be kind of cool. I'll, I'll mention it uh, to him on Monday morning. We speak every Monday for an hour. And uh, he's, he's essentially the mentor of my best friend who does the same job out of Philadelphia. Uh, and what they do is we, we get together almost like a mastermind or a round table, but it's via Skype every Monday morning. We talk about our challenges. We talk about our successes, uh, really anything that we're having. And, and, and in that weekly phone call, I realized it's so okay to ask questions. 
I think that was, I guess that would be my light bulb moment, was realizing, wow, it's really okay to ask questions. I don't have to know everything, and even in front of clients, really, if you don't know something, own it. Mm -hmm. I, I found that that's to be the most valuable thing at my age is I'm willing to work to get the answer, but I'm not willing to tell people I know the answer when I don't. Um, and and I, I've really started to read more. That's one of the healthy habits I've been trying to create. Uh, it's still very difficult for me. I find myself listening to more audiobooks in the car than sitting down and reading uh, because time blocking was one of my biggest weaknesses early on. A book that's really starting to help me now is The Power of Habit. Mm. I've kind of reshifted a lot of my mind frame on how I operate my business. It's actually freed up a lot of time in my life. There was days I was going into the office at 6, and I'd work till 10 at night. And I'd look back at my day, and it was super busy, and I got a lot done, I mm. guess. But then I look back, and I go, what did I accomplish today? Well, there's a big difference in busy and productive. Exactly. And, and some days I had a hard time deciphering between the two. Uh, so I've really been focusing on the last couple of months on developing my habits in a healthy way. Um, and my days have gotten easier. Uh, life has gotten better. I've worked less hours and gotten more accomplished. Uh, so I guess books, one, um, and just learning from anybody. I, I, I use the word mentor almost daily, and I, I, I call my best friends my mentors. I think you did that earlier, too. You're like, well, mentor, well, a good friend. I learn from everybody. You, there's an opportunity almost around every corner. Do I have a specific one? I'd, I'd say that'd be my mentor in Philly, David Trainer. Outside of that, it's I just learn from anyone I can. Well, you know, it's funny you mentioned this David Trainer. You said he may never hear this yeah. video, but yes, he will. Yeah. Because first of all, we're on Facebook Live right now. Yes. And second of all, one of the tips that I like to give people is always give a shout out, give people props. You get your hair cut, your hair looks good. Give your hairdresser a prop. You know, you have a great meal, let, let the, the person know. Do it on Facebook Live. Do it on, uh, you know, send a post on LinkedIn, whatever that looks like. Because people don't get acknowledged nearly as much as they could, right? And so when we are really cognizant of giving people a shout out and letting them know, because here's the thing, also as a strategic business networking strategist like myself, when you let that person know, hey, I gave you a shout out on that video. He is going to want to share that video because it makes him look good. Mm -hmm. And he wants other people to hear that. And guess what? When you've given a shout out, not only from your heart, not only did you feel good about doing it, not only does he feel good about getting it, but when he shares it, now you are seen by his people. You know, so it's all a fun way of marketing and a whole different kind of way of, of really being able to share. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I think of when I think of that is just give before you get. And that's a small, subtle way to give before you get. And uh, that, that's something I try to embody. And I actually have kind of taken that to one more step further and give, give, get. Uh, because a lot of people have taken on that mind frame, the giver's gain philosophy. But, the, but it's almost I give to get versus give in and you get. Right. Um, so I, I've, I've looked at how can I help somebody two ways outside of financially as a financial advisor, whatever it may be, before I expect to take them on as a client. Now, it's it, The funniest small example is I helped somebody recently get an uh, electrician um, before they needed my services because I'm the guy that knows people in town, and that's what I want to be seen as. Mm. And so it was funny enough that... They called me for an electrician, and I'm, I'm the financial guy in town. But it says something as silly and simple as that. But that client's net or that person is never going to go somewhere else uh, when they need that service. They're, they're not going to go down the road. Well, and it's just like, you know, when you're at a networking event and you're doing a Facebook Live and you're going around. Last night I was at an event, and I'm just introducing people. Hey, you know, who, who, would you like to have some free PR? Sure I would. So you're introducing that person, and they're getting a chance to be seen. Now, they're going to want to share that video, so that helps me. Now, we're not doing it just so that they'll share the video and help me. It's just understanding the law of reciprocity. I do something for you, you naturally want to reciprocate and do something for me. And people naturally want to be seen, so they're going to share that video. So it's give, give, get. And so when you're doing that video, all of those kinds of things happen. And then back to your point, you mentioned cause marketing. And one of the things about cause marketing is the give, 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 get. Because when you are doing something to help promote a cause, 
an organization, the animals, the elderly, veterans, the environment, cancer, whatever it is that you're passionate about, when you are doing something <clears throat> to help that cause, you and you are actually doing it in such a way that you can actually market your business, it is a give, 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 get because you're doing so much. For example, when I, I did a, 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 a venue way back 15 years ago, as a real estate agent, I could see the kids in the inner city lived in deplorable conditions. I mean, sad, dirty, filthy, negative, uh, violent conditions. I'm sure. And I would think, you know, my daughter and I can jump in my Mustang any day of the week and just go to the beach. Let's take these kids to the beach. Well, I come to find out you can't just take 50 inner city kids and throw them in a bus and go to the beach. You've got to have liability waivers and you've got to have certain things. But the thing is, is when I did that, I needed the help of title companies. I needed to go to the Boys and Girls Club and say, hey, you guys already have the waivers. You already have the bus. You know, you already have the kids. You know, and I go to the title company, hey, we need lunch to feed the kids. We need, uh, you know, uh, towels and all these. So in other words, when I put together this cause, and I was using it to market my business, but also to help those kids give, 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 get. When I was giving and doing and creating those relationships with all those people, six months, a year, three years later, as a real estate agent, when I needed somebody to help me with a title issue, when I needed a mortgage person to help me help this person get their loan, et cetera. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. It wasn't that I did it that day because I knew that six months from now I'd need some help with the mortgage. I did it, but then there came a time when I needed their help too, and it was just a natural law of reciprocity. So talk to me a little bit about, I know that you do all kinds of stuff with, with cause marketing in your own fashion and giving back and helping. Talk to me about some of the things that you've done recently that, that really pull at your heartstrings and have been able to help you help the community. I'm glad you asked that. That's great. I, um, I kind of backed my way into the organizations that I support. Um, I'm a big believer in treating people well the first time that you meet them. Um, and if I can get behind your organization um, f uh, as well, obviously I have to be very passionate about the cause that I'm supporting, but it's really big. I'm a big believer on how you treat somebody in the first interaction. So being new to Woburn, uh, I prospected businesses. I, I cold called on people. I, I dropped by and said hello. And uh, a lot of those relationships were make and break it at that point for me. Well, I don't know how you treated me with respect or not. Um, and, and some of the groups that I'm now a part of, I've met through Rotary, I've met through other organizations, I've been introduced to call, by colleagues and friends, and uh, all, all the ones I, I've gotten along with well are incredibly good people and organizations. And so I've, I'm really excited to say now that I've been in Woburn for two or three years, there's four or five nonprofits that I'm very passionate about. Uh, I, I go to a lot of their, or I go to every annual meeting or annual celebration. I support in different roles. Uh, coming up this week, actually, it's going to be a busy week. Uh, we have Social Capital Inc. It's a great nonprofit in Woburn, started by David Crowley. It's an incredible program that helps get cities more connected with their residents on on a bunch of different levels. So many diversities, uh, minorities, majorities. They're working for programs to make sure that the community has the resources that it needs. And I believe it's between six and eight communities that they serve currently right now, in addition to Woburn. He's a great guy. I met through Rotary. I'm going to be co emceeing an event this Thursday for a lunch. If anybody's free, it's going to be anybody's free tomorrow, excuse me, uh, let me know. We'll get you a ticket and get you in. But it's a great organization that's really just bringing inclusion into the conversation. Uh, I emceed an event for them last year, and I guess I did a good enough job that they asked me to come back and help support. Uh, on Saturday, one of the most passionate causes, uh, or one of the causes I'm most passionate about, is uh, a company or organization called New Path. New Path is designed, and the program, I, I'll start with the program that I introduced me to it. So they work with adults with disabilities. Um, and what got me hooked, frankly, is I didn't know anyone in that organization. But why I'm such a big believer in it is they help people with disabilities uh, get into the workforce, get embedded into the community. It pains me to see that 
people with disabilities used to be segregated. Go to this adult daycare where you work for five cents a piece or whatever it may mm. be, and then after five o'clock you're allowed to go home and be back in, but you can't go anywhere from home to work. Mm. Uh, and seeing what they call what they created for a program which was called Job Camp, these individuals that felt that they were ready to explore the working world went through, I believe it's a nine week or nine, um, excuse me, it's nine month regimented course every Friday. They go to class for a few hours. They work on interviewing skills, money management skills, time management skills, and, and they partner with people in the community to get them out there into the working world after. Uh, it's incredible. Like these, these I want to call them kids, these young adults are unbelievable workers. They're just misunderstood in many instances, and they have a lot of skills. They just might not have the skill set that we, we would have been looking for initially, so we just got to find the right job for them. Once I saw that job camp and to see the smile on 25 new workers out there in the community, I was blown away. Uh, they do a lot more than just the job camp. They do adult daycare services or in-home residences for more severe cases. Uh, but it's just an unbelievable organization. Dan Harrison's at the helm. Uh, Brett, uh, Brett Riley is their marketing director. I've become really close with Greg Morrison. They're all great guys over there. And so it's really easy, one, to be a part of the organization, and one and two, to roll with that circle because they make me a better person every time I step into the room. Um, well, and anybody who's, who's watching, and you know, right now people that are watching live or people that watch this a month or a year from yeah. now, make sure that you reach out to, to Tyler, to myself, to find out how to get connected with these different organizations because you're pointing at yeah. the heartstrings of some people that are like, wow, that's, that's a great organization that I'd like to be. It uh, really is unbelievable. And yeah. um, if for some reason it pulls on the heartstring enough, get a hold of me quickly because we're having a wonderful uh, walk the walk. It's a walkathon. It's a one-mile walk this Saturday at noon or at 11 a.m. at New Path headquarters. This is their biggest fundraiser uh, for the year. Last year it raised over $100,000 for them. Wow. Uh, and, and this is a really critical part of their funding to make sure these programs kick off smoothly and continue to run. Uh, so I, I would very much encourage people to come by. Just have to walk. You know, there's no financial commitment to just to check it out, see what's going on, be a part of the community. That night, we're going to back-to-back -back fundraisers. My fiance, God bless her, and that's why I'm marrying her. She's amazing. She supports every, all the causes that I support. Or as she goes with me. And, um, she really understands that I work hard for my business early on to be where I want to be. Uh, so we're going from that to a dinner, which is another great organization, the Children's Dyslexia Center in Woburn. Mm -hmm. Met a great bunch of people there. Um, Joyce Gillis is at the helm over there. Pam Giannades is a colleague of mine that I got to meet a little over a year ago, and I've, I've gotten a little bit more in touch with their uh, organization as well. Uh, I don't support them as much as I do some of the others on, from a from a business building standpoint, I sit on advisory committees to some of the other organizations. Uh, Children's Dyslexia Center is just a great organization. I'll go to their golf tournament every year. I'll go to their dinner. Well, you know, and, 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 and it's fun. And when we talk about cause marketing, think about all of these organizations that you're a part of. You know, as a financial advisor, as a as someone who counsels people on their finances, you know, this puts you in touch with so many people that can use your services, you know? And it's not coming at it from a place of, you know, walking into a networking event. Hi, I'm a financial advisor. Would you like to sit down and talk about your future, you know? This is about being able to bridge the humanity gap. That's a great point. This is about, you know, when I talk to different organizations about using cause marketing, they, their limited thinking is, uh, oh, well, I already volunteer mm -hmm. or fundraisers or I donate 10% of what I bring into said organization or, you know, I help out at the soup kitchen. This is not, this is not about that. If you volunteer, thank you. We need your help. If you stroke a check, good for you. This is about having a way to get out and meet people, people that you can do business with, people that you can build relationship with. You know, there are people that you're meeting right now, you're, you're young, you're going to be in business for another 30 years. You're going to meet people that, you know, 10 years from now, they're in a different organization, you're in a different place in life. Before you know it, you're creating something else. But it all happened because you're out doing this, you know. I always say to people, you never have to give another boring 30-second elevator pitch again. You never even have to go to another networking event again if you don't want to. Because when you're doing something cause marketing related, you have so many ways to talk to people that, that you don't have to go to a Chamber of Commerce event. You know, when I was doing the antique car show, 
I would have a flyer, and the flyer was about the car show. And I could, if I wanted to meet 50 new business owners, all I'd have to do is take the flyer and go around and meet people. Never, ever had to go into another networking event if I didn't want to. So the point is, is that it gives you a way to go out and meet people and, and meet them in a different place where their guard is down. Yes. You know, sometimes going to networking events, people feel icky. They feel awkward. Everybody has ulterior motive. When can I get in my 10 seconds of here's what I do, here's what I do, you know? And when we have a cause that we're passionate about and we can go to the board and hang out with people there or, you know, be at a golf course somewhere and just talking about different things that we're passionate about, you know, it gives us something to talk about besides, hey, what do you do? What do I do? When, when can we have coffee and talk about business? It gives us a chance to really just talk. You know, mm -hmm. it's just like you and I, we've never done business together. I've never given you a check. You've never given me a check, although I've given you some great advice. Yes, yeah. And as you are growing in your business, you, you give me advice on, on finances and things like that. But we introduce each other. Mm -hmm. You've introduced me to some wonderful women at different groups that are having me speak. You know, now I'm on your TV show. You're on my TV show. Guys, never get so short-sighted that when you go to an event that you feel like, oh, you know, it wasn't beneficial. I didn't have anything signed. I didn't meet a client. Really? Really? Did you meet other human beings? Did you look them in the eye? Did you have a conversation? You have no idea where things are going to go. I would much rather have the friendship that we have, share each other on each other's stages, introduce each other around than to have been so worried about getting a fifty dollar commission yeah it, that, that's too true it, it kind of goes back to the creating habits conversation as well it uh i listen now instead of think so uh, habits are cre from what I've, I've understood habits are created or there's three parts to a habit right the cue that bulb goes off then the activity then the reward now a lot of people that cue is you meet somebody new the habit is you think about yourself, and the reward is hopefully you get that $50 commission. Mm. I've built my business, fortunately, by seeing the queue, meeting somebody. The activity is all about them, and mm. the reward I leave feeling warm and tingly inside. So I've been thinking about my life in those few aspects, and what's the queue, what's the reward, and how do I change the activity? Because habits are hard to change on a whole. The activity is the easiest slice of it. As long as you're getting the similar reward, similar queue, you can change your life around. And I really, that's... Uh, becoming an active listener has been the best part of that. Well, because we only have 30 seconds to go. Only 30 seconds to go. What would be something that you would like to leave our listeners with? And, of course, you'll be able to get Tyler's information and, and be able to contact him uh, right here on Facebook. I'll, I'll put his uh, information. What is something we can do right now to change a habit? Become more self-aware. Think mm -hmm. about your worst habit. Carry around a notebook and... Uh, Every time that habit get, creates that cue, the urge for a smoker, it might be a stressful day. Every time you have the cue, mark it down. Become self-aware of what triggers your activity and then change the activity. Give yourself the same reward. Nice. Well, Tyler Gates, we are at the end. I'm hoping that they're still recording as I am talking because they can edit later on. It is always. Always a pleasure, Cammie. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks I really appreciate on. it. Bye-bye. Yay. That was fun. Yeah, it's always good. Time flies when you're having fun. I know, right? <laughs> and I saw Bill.